What you see here is a flocking scene. It's totally produced in Maya Mesh. And the objects are cones with a white top and a black bottom. So when you see a lot of white, they're focusing us. And when you see a lot of black or dark blue, they're flying away from us. It's a very simple animation and looks so complex. And I'll show you how to achieve this. First of all, we need an object. Let's go to polygon modeling, for example, and pick a cone. Since we'll be working with a cone for a while, let's give it a nice color. New, new material and Arnold standard surface. And here under color, you click on the checkerboard and choose a ramp as a texture. In order to see it, you need to click here. So the ramp is uh, active already, you see it working here. And we can introduce a, a color in the middle here, for example, a blue. So it goes from black to blue to white. Fine, I would say. And now um, with this thing selected, we'll choose Mesh and click here. It will create, I think, 10 objects of the same kind. They're only instances of each other, so they are not really um, independent from each other. Now, uh, in order to use the flight mechanism here in Mesh, you need um, you need a little bit of randomness. You need a basic random uh, distribution of these things, otherwise it will look quite boring. Uh, believe me, you need it. So um, let's go to random and we add a random node, which distributes them randomly and we can um, use these things here for rotation, etc. Not for scaling right now. I'm I'm not a fan of scaling uh, with this um, in this tutorial here. And uh, if we want to make it smaller or make the cone smaller, we click on the in the outliner on the polygon cone one here, which is not visible anymore. But when we press the key R, which is for scaling, we can scale the invisible object, which will scale the instances accordingly. So with this selected here, we have no animation. If we run the animation, there's nothing happening, of course. But the flight node will immediately start creating an animation. So let's click on it. And now if we get a little bit out of the scene here, we have uh, several colors, sort of spheres. And you will see them move in a second. See, they're moving left and right, back and forth. The two objects here. We can stretch the animation range a little bit, so we see more of it. And this is where the simulation takes place. There's a center node here. Uh, which uh, shoots out the particles, the uh, our little cones here. And uh, around this is a, um, a s s sphere which uh, separates them from each other. And here they are recollecting and uh, moving closer together. So um, if we have a look at the... Let's increase the size of the cones again. So they're larger now. So let's see what they are doing. So with only 10 objects, the flocking motion is sort of visible, but we want more particles, really. So we go back to Mesh, and here's the Mesh Distribute, where we have 10 number of points. Let's make 300. and rerun the simulation. That's quite a difference, and now we can see the flocking motion. 
it's such a, a complex thing. Sim simulation has so many parameters that uh, we won't go into depth. And actually, I don't. Uh, I haven't tried all of them really. Uh, but the node is here, and up here you have separation strength. For example, how strongly the individual uh, cones feel each other, and how strongly they want to be separated. So uh, let's uh, increase the separation range. Strength, I mean, separation strength. And now the separation strength is zero, so they are much closer together now. Let's put it to a medium value here. You have an alignment strength, cohesion strength, which has to do with uh, their connectivity as well. And um, the field of vision means how far each particle, each cone, looks to see the next neighbor. Uh, the, there's a separation zone, which is this thing here. That's the zone where they are separated, down here. We can increase this. So here they're separated. We can set it to zero and we can uh, change the alignment so, uh, zone where the flock is being created, the flocking motion. Very complex indeed. We can change the speed and mass the maximum, the minimum speed, like here, if, if we raise it, everything will be much faster. Not really the flocking motion, but the motion of this flocking um, dynamic system here. We cannot animate this thing. It's uh, done by the settings in the flight node here in the mesh editor. For example, the gravitate and inertia the gravitation strength. Let's reduce this from 6 to 0. See, this thing bounces much more now. Runs out of our view. Now it bounces much less, see, with the gravitate strength, the gravitate distance, etc. You have a, a, an important thing here under view controls, which I find it very important. Uh, display type. Uh, if you uh, choose instead of normal none, the thing will disappear uh, and you will just uh, focus on the flocking motion here, which is very interesting, isn't it? Now, um, with this um, being said, we will introduce a an object now which um, serves as an attractor. And um, we can create an attractor right here, right mouse click, create. It's under attractor controls here in the mesh flight shape node. It's right here. So the attractor is already in the scene here. Right here, this uh, pink uh, cross here. And you will immediately see how the flocking motion is affected by it. The cones want to come back to their locator. So they do a flocking motion because they're in the dynamic system. But they try to assemble here and they have to keep distance from each other. Because they have a separation value which we just uh, focused on. So the locator is right in the middle like in a rugby game. And they all want to be there as well, but they can't because they feel the distance to the others and they have to keep the distance. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll animate the locator. And the locator is here. And we'll move it to the side in order to see it right now. Actually, you will see how the, <laughs> the particles will go here now. Uh, they it's not particles really, it's uh, it's cones in our case. Um, no, we'll uh, let it circle around the whole scene. So we go to the top window and uh, 
we don't need this right now but we'll need it in a second we go to curves and surfaces and make a sphere uh, not a sphere a circle really uh, make nerve circle and uh, the sweep means if it's open or not uh, we want it closed of course and the radius currently is set to one and we want it much bigger like we want to make it as big as this so we type in maybe 60 yeah that's a good size and uh, now we can go back to our view here we have the locator here and we pick the uh, we shift select the circle and then we go to under animation here constrain because we're gonna constrain the locator to that um, to that sphere to that circle so constrain motion path attach to motion path I'll keep it here for a second so you can meditate on it we're gonna constrain the locator to the circle and uh, if you look further down in the uh, at the top left of the Maya window you see select objects to animate along a motion path followed by the motion path curve so we selected the locator first and then the motion path so it's done now and now the, <laughs> the flocking motion will be very interesting because the locator will circle around the whole scene And now of course we can speed this up or we can uh, uh, change the shape of the curve we select the curve we press F8 go to component selection and select maybe the three CVs here if you press the key B you get uh, uh, the smooth selection like this if you press it again you get a, a straightforward selection I prefer the smoothing uh, selection here the soft selection tool we can set this a little bit up and this a little bit further inside maybe and uh, then we press F8 again and we have uh, and I think we can uh, make the cones a little bit smaller because we have so many now like this and now let's run the animation again it's actually a simulation When you see more dark blue or, or black that's the bottom of the cones and uh, this gives you a good idea about in which direction they move the white uh, parts are the the tops of the cone so now the uh, the locator stays here for a while because we, we chose the animation length for the for the circling motion uh, to uh, I think to be set to 1000 frames now yeah 1000 so in 1000 frames it uh, it arrives here of course we can go back to the motion path which is a um, which is a node here here right here and we can change the um, the u value for example and make for example the u value instead of uh, 0 0.048 we can make it to 0 0.5 and set a keyframe here so it will the locator will have a totally different motion now it will rush here and then slow down which makes put stress on the on the cones to follow actually right here we can give it the value 0 0.2 I think it will go back then set a key so they're trying to follow the locator here it rushes there now it flows back
They're all trying to get there, but they have their own dynamics here. Of course, this is beautiful to render, and Arnold renders it all right. In more complex scenes, you need to export the whole scene uh, as Alembic, which is uh, something for another tutorial.